in this video i am going to tell you about how to bring your stress to zero now stress zero is no good for your body you know any part of the body that is not put under stress is going to shrink but the problem with stress is if it is prolonged so the goal of this video is not to help you become stress-free but to help you minimize it okay that's the the motive of this video and i'm going to tell you a substance that is going to help you to bring your stress to zero and of course for a short period of time for example when you, you don't exercise the your muscles the muscles shrink all right which is not good for your over, overall health stress is good but when this is prolonged stress that is when your boy your your your, your organs begins to bend all right so when you are stressed i'm going to tell you a substance you, you should use that is very good at reducing your stress before i tell you about the this substance let's look at how stress affects your body let's understand that concept and and see how this substance also works okay now what is stress stress is high level of cortisol all right high level of cortisol is responsible for producing stress in us and cortisol comes from the hypothalamus the pituitary gland and then the adrenal gland now anytime you are stressed your body requires a lot of energy and energy comes from sugar all right now because of that this hormone the glucocorticoids which we also call the cortisol will convert all other food substances in the body into sugar for example it will convert fat proteins ketones all of them will be converted into sugar now when you have a lot of sugar in your body what is the meaning of that you are going to develop what type 2 diabetes okay now with a high level of cortisol in the body it affects a lot of your so many of your systems now let's look at the first system which is the immune system as i said earlier the cortisol will shrink your organs now some of the organs which will be shrink, which will be shrunk are the spleen the lymph nodes and then the thymus all right those are all the immune cells those are the, those are the, the the house for immune our immune system all right when those organs are shrinked you have a very weak immune system and when there's a weak immune system you'll be prone to what viral infections bacterial infections and parasitic infections all right someone who is stressed for a very long time will definitely get sick all right now let's look at the effect of stress on the stomach now it can it can produce what ulcer stomach ulcer now it is also responsible for reducing the amount of vitamin b1 in the body amount of calcium will be will be, will be reduced calcium and h plus ions now when we talk of h plus ion this is an interesting one because you know h plus i don't know if you've heard about ph before the power of hydrogen now when you are losing hydrogen the acidity of the body reduces making you more alkaline okay so and when you are more alkaline these are some of the symptoms you have muscle twitching you'll be hyperventilating anxiety and cramping cramping of your muscles all right and also you can lead to gastroesophageal reflex disease which is also called the GERD now for digestion to occur it is, it is uh, the, the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for 
digestion to occur. All right. But if your body is under constant stress, you don't have time for digestion. That means what? You will be having gastroesophageal reflex. Now, when we look at the cardiovascular system on the heart, your blood pressure will rise or your heart rate will rise and corticoids are responsible for what? Vasoconstriction. Now, vasoconstriction means what? Re reduction in the, in the volume of the arteries. All right. The arteries and veins become, the, their volume will become restricted. If that happens in the heart, you know, in the heart, we have the coronary arteries. Now, it's the coronary arteries that take blood to the various part of, your, of the heart. And if all of them become constricted, that means the amount of blood that will be get to all of the various parts of the heart will reduce, which can also lead to what? Angina, chest pain, and if you're not careful, you can even lead to necro uh, necrosis of, the, the, of some part of the heart. All right. Now, let's look at the brain. This is an interesting one. Now, the nerve, the brain is just a power, it's, it's, a, it's the how for neurons. All the brain is formed by neurons. Now, there's communication between each neurons. And this, this communication between neurons is facilitated by substances which we call neurotransmitters. Okay, because this is, this is like, this is an example of a junction between the the, the, the the junction between two neurons okay now for this neuron to be able to communicate with this neuron there's no physical contact between them but the substance that this particular neuron will, se will secrete a substance which will move from this place to this particular neuron and that move that substance which transmit the impulse is called the neurotransmitters okay some of there are so many types of neurotransmitters some, when they are transmitted, they slow down the activity of the heart. Some, when they are secreted, they, they, they activate the activity of the heart, of the, of the brain. Okay, now, when you are stressed, there's a particular uh, neurotransmitter which is called GABA. Alright, and it, 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 the stress reduces the amount of GABA inside the brain. What's the meaning of that? Your brain is always is, is only always active. Your brain is always active. And when you are always active, you need more energy. So all your proteins will be converted into, into sugar. All your fats will be converted into sugar. All your ketones will be converted into sugar for the brain to keep being active and putting you under stress. You don't have peace inside. Alright? Now, but when this GABA is activated and there's enough of this GABA, it slows down the activity of the brain. Which is good for you. Okay, so the substance I'm talking about is called magnesium. Magnesium helps the GABA by decreasing the activity of the brain. You know, there are GABA receptors which are inside the neurons. So with the help of magnesium, the GABA and the magnesium attaches to the receptors of GABA which helps you to, uh, to slow down the activity of your brain and thereby making you tranquil. Like tranquil, it gives you peace. You become calm. It gives you tranquility. What is the meaning of tranquility according to the dictionary? It means you are peaceful, serene, and shaken, and worried, and you are calm. So how, 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 what amount of the magnesium must you take? One, one capsule at night before you sleep and if you like if you are so much stressed you can take one in the morning and one in the evening and that should do you the trick all right and if you like that video that, that, that's what i have for you right now if you like what i've just shared with you kindly subscribe to the channel all right i hope to see you in another one press the red button